handicapper steve here handicapping the racing from gulfstream park here on saturday it is the 29th of january 2022 it's pegasus day from gulfstream we're going to look at the pegasus and all the other stakes races on the program but before i get on to that remember to please follow me on twitter at horse racing hit five for more selections for race courses around the world and remember to join me tomorrow for my sam houston Connolly preview an excellent card there and if you're interested in the european racing uh the, the uh, british racing over the over the jumps this weekend today there's a great card from Sheltonham. it's Sheltonham uh festival preview day so uh, check out my preview for that it's already up on here on uh youtube but uh, it's pegasus day from Goldstream. big the first really big day of racing here in the states for uh, the new year and uh, y there's just, just some great racing so uh, we're gonna look at the races right now races 5 7 8 9 10 11 and the feature 12th race so let's get to it right now the fifth race from Goldstream Park it is the La Proviante Stakes it's a grade 3 event going for a purse of $150,000 race for Phillies and mayors four-year-olds and upwards we have a field of nine horses heading to the turf course the distance of ground here of 2400 meters or if you want to go by that or the distance of ground of one mile and one half on the Gulfstream Park turf course. 2,400 meters, a mile and a half, and I show the diagram, just gives me a second to look down my notes, just bear with me. The portable rails are at zero feet, so that's the inner portion of the 120 foot wide turf course. This will be the first time they'll be using the inner 12 feet of the turf course since um, early last summer. Um, over the summer, they uh, renovated the parts of the turf course, especially that inner 12 feet with new drainage, so it hasn't been used in quite a while. When that happens, I've noticed where they don't use that inner portion of the turf course very much, the speed really holds up. So you just want to keep that in mind. But um, my top selection here in La Paviante, I'm going to go with the number four horse, always shopping. We'll go 4617 in the Super Facta. 4617 Super, top selection of four horse, always shopping. This six-year-old mare by Awesome Again, Tom Pleasure Trains, Tyler Gaffleone gets the mount. The horse is most recent out and came New Year's Eve here at Goldstream Park. About a mile three-eighths in the Via Borghese Sticks, the local prep race for this race. And the horse whom by nose, she stalked from a little bit stupidly wide poster, but she slowly moved her way up. She fought a good race to the wire and she got the job done an all-around good race she loves running on this turf course I do think the mile and a half is really up her alley she has some thoroughly pays here to win i think she's sitting on a very good run Two backs ran the 7th of November here in New York at Belmont. A mile and a half in the Zagora, where she finished 6 by 5 a quarter length. She just kind of stalked and never could quick it up. I do think the ground was just on the softer side of firm, which she just wasn't handling there. And then before then, the way at Belmont, a mile three eighths on the 3rd of October. First off, a little bit refreshing. She finished 3rd by 2 and 3 quarter lengths. Was with them early on, but then she just kind of hit the wall at the top of the lane. But she likes this turf course. She won the La Paviante last year, won the Vio Borghese in December 2020, came back to a very good place in the uh, Orchid handicap cap last uh, March where she just you know got caught by Warlike Cottage who won next start and was having a great year in the, that uh, division but come back here training well 7 to 5 let's use her second likely swimmer I think is a 6 horse beautiful lover we'll definitely use her to end off this early pick 5 um, Christoph Montrain Joel Rosario gets him out most recently in the Via Borghese this horse finished 3rd by 3 lengths and she just really couldn't get that good turn of foot until very late in the run coming here the extra furlong shoot suits her well the very dry turf course suits her well I think she's another horse you have to keep an eye on at 7 to 2 Joel Rosario is one of the best finishing riders on a horse uh, in the country um, uh, but to recap my selection for the fifth from Goldstream Park, it's degree three La Poviante. Let's take the four horse always shopping. Give kudos to the six horse beautiful lover. Four six one seven super. Let's go four six in the multi race. Let's get to race seven from Goldstream. The seventh race from Goldstream. It is the William McKnight Stakes. It's a grade three event going for a purse of two hundred thousand dollars. Race for four year olds and upwards. We have an overflow field of fifteen horses entered, but only twelve could go to the Goldstream Park Lawn. The distance of ground here of twenty four hundred meters or the distance of ground of a mile and a half on the Goldstream Park turf course. Again, the rails are at zero feet, so it's the inner portion of the turf course. Twenty four hundred meters, mile and a half in the McKnight. This race for years was always run at Calder, along with the previous race, the uh, the Philly equivalent, the La Poviante, and uh, you, it was always run at late December, and you always used to see these good horses come back from the Breeders' Cup running this race, and uh, so they moved to the Goldstream. It's good that they're keeping some of these Calder races, uh, you know, alive um, here at Goldstream, along with the Hooper later on, uh, but um, like I said, it's always an exciting race to McKnight. I'm going to take here as a top selection of three-horse Farmington Road. We'll go 3-8-10-9 in the Super 
Factor. 3810 Super Top Selection of Three Horse Farmington Road. Five Year Old Horse by Quality Road. George Arnold trains this one. Esmeal Jaramillo gets the mount. The horse's most recent outing came the 26th of November at Churchill. Mile 316 on a good main track in an optional 62 claimer. And the horse finished second by three and a half lengths. He sat back early but was really gaining late. I thought he had a decent turn of foot. Nothing bad about that race. I think he's the kind of horse with a good taste in front of him. You know, he can really run a good race. I don't think it matters what ter uh, surface he runs on. Two back in the 21st of October at Belmont, a mile and the 8th and optional 80. A turf course that does not play towards closers. He finished fifth by eight and a half lengths, was stupidly wide, and just couldn't keep up. It wasn't his day to win there. And then before that, at Belmont, 16th of September, first off, long refreshing, a mile and a quarter and optional 80. He finished fifth by two and a quarter lengths. He just kind of stalked, never really got into it. Like I said, he was sitting a little bit too closer in those New York races. I do think he does better from a little bit farther behind. Before that, he ran November of 2020 at Keelan in the marathon over the mile 5 eights. He finished 11th by 22 and a half lengths, and he just was done early. Uh, and then they ran him in the Twilight Derby, where he finished 5th by 1 quarter lengths, and had a very troubled trip, but he was gaining a little bit late. And then his most recent victory came actually at Colonial in July of 2020. Mile 316, the lounge race, 40,000. Winning by a night coming from behind, I thought it was a good race after all said and done with some serious class relief. Before that, they ran him in the, in the Belmont Stakes over the mile the 8th in June of 2020, where he just beat, you know, two horses, so I'm never getting into it there, and then he ran an okay fourth of the Arkansas Derby uh, in March, uh, in um, May of 2020, uh, not a bad race at all for him to get that fourth, but like I said, coming here, you know, I think he'll see a good pace, and this one, a 15 to 1, will use him on the ticket, because his buyers, I think, are up to scratch, um, don't throw out the eight horse here either, um, Baker's Bay, he won, uh, he, he placed most recently at Aqueduct, going out 316th and optional 80, where he needed that race, um, first off the bench, um, uh, before that, they ran him in the Louisville handicap over the mile and a half, where he finished fifth by two and three quarter lengths. He was very wide that day, which cost him. But he won it over the Keelan mile three sixteenths in April. And uh, you know he's the kind of horse that his distances get longer. I think he gets better. You know he could sit closer also. At twelve to one, we'll definitely use him on the ticket. And also the ten horse Avon. He step. You know he's stepping back in trip. You don't say that a lot going to a mile and a half trip. But he won over the two miles here on near, on Christmas Eve and the Allen Jerkins, winning very very easily, setting pedestrian fractions. He's another horse. A mile and a half shouldn't be a problem. Like I said, if the speed's going to hold up, I think he'd get the job done from the outside post yard because I could see him leaving to save some ground. But to recap my selection for the 7 from Goldstream Park, it is the William McKnight, the McKnight Handicapper, the McKnight Stakes. Now let's take the 3 horse Farmington Road, give kudos to the 8 horse Baker's Bay and the 10 horse Avon, 3 8 10 9 Super. Let's go 3 8 10 in the multi race to the 8th event from Goldstream Park. The eighth race from Goldstream. It is the inside information stakes. It's a grade two event going for a purse of two hundred thousand dollars. Race for Phillies Mayors, four year olds and upwards. We have a field of ten horses heading to the main track. The distance of ground here of fourteen hundred meters if you want to go with that, or the distance of ground of seven furlongs in the Goldstream Park main track. Fourteen hundred meters, seven furlongs in the inside information. My top selection, we're going to go take the number five horse here for graces. We'll go five, six, eight, seven in the Super Facta. Five, six, eight, seven, Super. Top selection of five horse, four graces. Five row mare by Majestic Perfection. Ian Wilkes trains. Julian Leperu gets the mount. The horse's most recent outing came the 6th of January at Goldstream Park. Six furlongs and option 62 claimer. And the horse been a second by a nose. It was a horse's first start in nearly seven months. And she needed the race there, but she ran decently. She sat back early. She slowly moved her way up. Started Starship Knowledge just had the better jump on her, um, you know, that day uh, to win on the front end. But this horse was gaining ground. Coming here a lot more cranked up in the $200,000 stakes race than she was in that $45,000 allowance race. I think she was really sitting on a very good run. I think she's ready to pounce here today. Two back in the Rocks a lot at Churchill. Six and a half rounds on the 19th of June. She finished fourth by five and a quarter length. She was with him early on, then completely crumbled. It just wasn't her day to win. She just really was lax days goal. Something must have won a mess because you didn't see the horse for the rest of the year. And then before then, the Raven run of 2020 at Keelan, over the 7 eighths of a mile. She finished 7 by 10 quarter lengths there. And again, she just really couldn't get into it. Venetia Harbor really ran a good race. Finite ran a second place finish, went on to win next start out. Uh, and then prior to that, the 8 bells of Churchill, the 7 for a long. She finished second by 2 and a quarter lengths. And again, she was with them. She got caught by Sconson, but still ran her heart out there. But then before then, July 2020, won the Beaumont at Keelan, won the Dogwood at Churchill before that. And, um, you know, won a Churchill Eve easy there. And then won it against first time. Uh, uh, winners at uh, here at Goldstream in April 2020, uh, or excuse me, at, um, at Churchill before that, after that, uh, winning by one and three quarter lengths very, very nicely. She had a lot of speed in her. I think she likes, likes the seven furlongs, and, you know, her form's very good at times. 
little crap at times also, like that La Roxelana and Raven Run, but those are very two very, very tough races. It's not the deepest field in the world. I'm going to take here, you know, last year's winner of this race, Pacific Gateway, like back, just running back in this one today, and I think she has a good chance of winning. Uh, she's coming off a little bit of refreshing, but she likes running here, and she likes training in South Florida. Um, they ran her in the Floral Park of Belmont most recently in October, where she just didn't get a good race on the turf. Before that, ran a very good race in Roaming Rachel at Parks over the six and a half. Um, she hasn't won since the Hurricane Birdie here at Goldstream last season, but she, you know, there's, you know, she runs good races locally at eight to one. Let's use her. You know, your wise guy horse, who um, you know is the eight horse, I think, just one time. My thoughts on her: she's either going to win by country mile, or she's going to win it, finish way, way out of it. Um, you know, she's been beating those Penn National horses and Pennsylvania horses very, very easily, but she's come to the big leagues today. I have questions about that. Can she keep up? We're going to see today. I do prefer the other two because they've proven that they can run against the big league horses. But to recount my selection for the eighth from Goldstream Park, it is the grade two inside information stakes. Let's take the four, five horse, four graces. Give kudos to the six horse Pacific Gale and the eight horse just one time. Five, six, eight, seven, super. Five, six, eight in the multi race. Let's get to the ninth race from Goldstream. The ninth race from Goldstream Park. It is the Pegasus World Cup Philly Mayor Turf Invitational. It's the inaugural Pegasus Philly Mayor Turf. It's a great three event going for a purse of half a million dollars. Race for Philly's Mayor is four year olds and upwards. We have a field of 11 horses going to the Goldstream Park Turf Course. The distance of ground of 1,700 meters or the distance of ground of a mile and 1 16th on the Goldstream Park Turf Course. 1,700 meters, a mile 1 16th here in the Pegasus Philly Mayor Turf. And, um, you know, very good race here. And uh, it's going to be run on the inner turf course at zero feet. And, um, you know, they, they added this race this year. It wouldn't surprise me next year if they add the uh, sprint div division of this race. And then in a few years' time, we'll have, uh, you know, the, the quarter horse version and then the early juvenile. Uh, but, um, it, you know, it's still a good race here. I'm going to go with the four horse Regal Glory as a top selection. We'll go four, seven, three, five in the Super Facto. Four, seven, three, five, Super. Top selection of four horse Regal Glory. Six year old mare by Animal King. Kingdom. Chad Brown trains. Jose Ortiz comes in to mount uh, to ride this horse. The horse's most recent out of him, 20th of November at Del Mar. One mile in the Matriarch, and the horse went by two and a half lengths, and on the front end all throughout, very pedestrian fractions, and she just kept going. That was a very good run. You know, again, it's speed favoring turf course, not going to get an, as easy lead as she did last time out at Del Mar, but I think her speed could really hold up a long way, and I think she could really run a good race here today. Two backs were in the First Lady at Keeneland, one mile on the 9th of October, and she finished second by half a length there. Below out rarely ran well. This horse just kind of stalked and really never good get the good turn of foot. But he still ran her heart out there. And then before then, the De La Rosa at Saratoga over the mile on the 8th of August. She won by a half length, and she switched the tactics up that day. She came from behind, was stupidly wide, but she got the job done. Running a 96 buyer, not the best bit her career. But she still got the job done there. And then before that, Belmont Stakes Day at Belmont Mile in the adjusted game. She finished fourth by three and a half lengths. She didn't break that well. She wanted to go. Jose had a really strong hold on her. She closed up well late. But, you know, after that beginning, she just really couldn't keep up. And then plenty of grace at Aqueduct before that over the mile in April. She wouldn't buy a half length. Not the flashiest victories, but again, she got the job done. She likes running here at Goldstream. She ran here once a few seasons ago and had a very nice place. And uh, just looking over her start, she's had a very good career. She's making her 17th start today and she always runs these game on races um, the only time she doesn't really show up is when she has you know a little bit of a troubled trip but uh, coming here today at 2-1 to one, I like her a lot um, your second likeliest winner I think of this one it would be the 7 horse nicest she placed in the American Oaks on the dirt I at um, Santini over the mile quarter on Boxing Day where she just couldn't keep up with Queen Goddess who really walked in the front end but this horse really had a decent race uh, to get placed there in her dirt debut before that won the red uh, place in the red carpet handicap where she was just coming a little bit too late uh, and then before the QE2 Cup um, you know she just really didn't like the wet ground she really goes up with the quick ground today at 6 to 1 she definitely went on paper and also you have to give kudos to the three horse Lady Spice Spear for Roger Raffield and Junior Alvarado um, you know this horse uh, placed in Tropical Oaks a few weeks ago here, uh, and then some of those races at Woodmine, she could definitely win um, if she runs a quarter of those starts. 8-1, to one, we'll use her on the ticket uh, in the late pick three, or that call Pegasus pick three. We're going to play that, actually. So to recap my selection for the ninth from Goldstream, it's the Pegasus Philly Mayor Turf. Let's take the four-horse Legal Regal Glory as a top selection. Give kudos to the seven-horse Nisus and the three-horse Lady Spice Spear. We'll go 4-7-3-5 Super, 4-7-3 in the multi-race to the tenth event.
The 10th race from Goldstream Park, it is the Fred W. Hooper Stakes. It's a great three event going for a purse of $150,000, race for four-year-olds and upwards. We have nine horses going to the main track, the distance of ground here of 1,600 meters, or the distance of ground of one mile in the Fred W. Hooper Stakes. 1,600 meters, one mile here. My top selection, I'm going to go take the number eight horse, the eight horse who is Speaker's Corner. We'll go 8167 in the Super Facto. 8167 Super. Top selection, eight horse Speaker's Corner. This four year old colt by Street Sense. Belmont trains this one. Junior Alvarado gets them out for Godolphin. Most recently, they ran the horse here in New York at Aqueduct on the 27th of November. Mon Nathan Discovery Stakes, and the horse finished second by half length. He just couldn't stay the two turn mile in the eighth. He sat on the front end, very pedestrian fractions, and then he was just kind of drifting late, just couldn't keep up. It wasn't his day to win. Come, but he ran his hard out, earning a 103 buyer, cutting back to a one turn mile. You know, he's in a more realistic spot to win. Don't think he needs to lead. It'd be good if he gets it, but don't, don't think he needs to lead. I think from a starting position, it'd be great for him. I think he'll really romp and run a good race here today. Two back in optional 80, first time face, uh, second time facing older horses at Belmont, a mile 16th on 29th of October. The horse in by six and a quarter length and coming home very, very easily there, earning a 109 buyer. This horse was a little bit wide, but he still got the job done. An all around great race for him there. Major improvement off the race before, which was around two turns at parks at mile nathan's pennsylvania derby the horse finished six by 20 and three quarter lengths there and just really never showed up on the inside you want to be wide on that track which just you know wasn't his thing and then before that saratoga seven furlongs lounge race hundred three thousand. First off long refreshing he won by five and a quarter lengths he had a horrible beginning sat back early but basically circled the field for a little bit while late but he got the job done coming here training well back to a one-turn mile which i think he likes at two to one i love him a lot in this spot your second likely winner winner is the one horse fearless he won the harlan's holiday here over the mile 16th very very easily from a stocking position and then before that he had a very nice place in a handicap in november here at goldstream you know he's a very good horse i think the one turn mile should suit him well and at five to two we'll use him on the ticket but you know like i said speaker's corner i'm gonna play a few I'm going to play two t late pick four tickets. I'm going to single on one of them, but I'm going to go on, on the cheap ticket. But I'm going to use Fearless on the expensive ticket. But to recount my selection for the 10th from Goldstream, it is the Fred W. Hooper. Let's take the eight horse speakers. Corners the top selection. We'll give kudos to the one horse Fearless. 8167 Super. 8 1 in the multi race. Let's get to the 11th race from Goldstream. The 11th race from Goldstream Park. It is the Pegasus World Cup Turf Invitational. It's a great one event going for a purse of a million dollars. Race for four-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 12 horses heading to the Goldstream Park Turf Course. The distance of ground here of 1,800 meters if you want to go by that. Or the distance of ground of one mile and one-eighth on the Goldstream Park Turf Course. 1,800 meters, a mile and eighth here in the Pegasus Turf Cup. Portable rails are at 55 feet today. My top selection, I'm going to go take the number eight horse, Sacred Life. We'll go 8653 in the Super Facto. 8653 Super. Top selection, eight horse, Sacred Life. This seven year horse here, Chaperon Trains. Jose Ortiz gets the mount. Horses most recent on came 27th of November at Del Mar. Mile 16th in the Sea Biscuit Handicap. And the horse finished second by head. You need to have good position on that Del Mar turf course. This, had, this horse had everything but was stupidly wide, didn't break that well. But for him to get place that day behind field paths i thought it was a very good effort coming here a lot better turf course where you get a better trip i think he could really run a good race and improve off that last race where he showed a 96 buyer two back around the knickerbocker at belmont a mile and eighth on the 10th of october and he won by head another turf course that does not play towards closers he sat back early a little bit wide but he got the job done fighting to the wire an all-around good race earning a 98 buyer and then before that saratoga one mile off to 100 the horse finished second by half and length there was stupidly wide but was coming late I do think the mile and eighth is to his liking. I think think the very fast turf course is to his liking. And, uh, you know, I think he'll get a better trip than he's been getting on those narrow turf courses at, uh, at, at other tracks. He ran this race last year, or excuse me, in 2020, where he finished fourth by five and a quarter lengths. There he was drawn stupidly wide, but he was gaining late. Came back in August 2020 to win the Ocean Port at Gulf and Monmouth and came back to a very good fourth place finish in the uh, turf classic at uh, Churchill in, in September 2020. And then if you look at his 2021 campaign, he only won once in the Knickerbocker, but he was, again, running these good, good races. Had a very good third-place finish behind Raging Bull in that Maker's Mark Mile in, uh, in April. Uh, but I like him a lot. At 6-1, we'll use him. 
don't throw out the six horse here currently. And he won this race last year very, very nicely. Went on to win the Muniz Memorial very nicely after that at Fairgrounds and then the Turf Classic. But then he lost form in the Manhattan where he's drawn very wide and just couldn't stay the mile and a quarter. Do think the mile and eighth is really to his liking. We'll see if he needs to race, but he can win off of ability here at three to one. And also the five horse um, hit the road. He's coming from the West Coast. I don't like betting West Coast turf horses on uh, I'm coming to the East uh, because I do think they get over better at times, but I don't think they're as good because they're facing a little lesser quality horse in the West Coast. But he won. He uh, placed in the City of Hope Mile where he had a horrible trip and then had a horrible trip in the Delmar Mile where he finished third. Um, he came here to run at Keeneland in the Maker's Mark where, he, again, he just really couldn't quicken up. But then he ran these good races in Southern California. I do think the Mile Nath is really to his liking. At H1, we'll use him on the ticket. But like I said, I do have questions with him. But to recount my selection for the 11th from Goldstream, it's the Pegasus World Cup turf. Let's take the 8 horse Sacred Life as a top selection. Give kudos to the six horse Colonel Liam and the five horse hit the road. Eight six five three super. Eight six five in the multi race. Let's get to the big twelfth race, the nightcap from Goldstream. The nightcap, the twelfth race from Goldstream Park. It's the Pegasus World Cup. It's a Grade One event going for a purse of three million dollars. Race for four year olds and upwards. We have a field of nine horses going one lap around the Goldstream main track, which is eighteen hundred meters in circumference, with a distance of ground of a mile and one eighth on the Goldstream Park main track. Eighteen hundred meters, a mile and eighth here in the Pegasus World Cup. Not so much World Cup this year. All these horses are based in North America. But my top selection, I love the four horse life is good. I'm going to go 4165 in the Super Facto. 4165 Super. Top selection to four horse life is good. There's four no copain to the mischief. Uh, top Ledger trains. I read Ortiz Jr. gets the mount. The horse is most recent out again the 6th of November. At Del Mar, one mile in the British Cup dirt mile, and the horse went by five and a quarter lengths and at seventy cents a dollar. He had enough in the bank in the tank to win that day. He just quickened up nicely and just kept going. An all around good race. Speed favoring track has a lot of forwardly pace. I think he could really run a good race here today. Two back in the Kelso, second off the bench at Belmont, one mile on the twenty fifth of September. The horse went by five and a quarter lengths and at five cents a dollar. He was on cruise control throughout and kept going. An all around good race there. And then a race before where he ran his heart out, but he lost. It was in the Allen Jerkins at Saratoga, 7 for 20th of August. He finished second by a neck behind Jackie's Warrior. Jackie's Warrior just got to this horse late, but this horse really, you know, um, you know, ran his heart out there. Don't think it was Mike Smith's best ride, but he still ran his heart out there. And then before then, the San Felipe at San Sanito, mile 16th last March. The horse went by eight lengths. And again, very, very easy against some very tough uh, horses. Beat the Derby winner, Medina Spear, who finished second. This horse was drifting late, but that was because he was out in front by a country mile. And then when the sham before that very, very nicely at San Antonio over the mile trip. Again, drifting late, which was a common theme with him early on, but um, in the Kelso, they fixed the drifting a little bit in the uh, in the Bruce Cup also. Coming here a mile and eighth shouldn't be a problem. It's very speed-favoring course, and I think he has enough forwardly pace and, you know, natural speed to beat Nick's go, who I have second on the ticket. Six-year-old horse by Painter. He's gotten everything his own way in his last few races. In the Bruce Cup, everything his own way. Walked all the way around the racetrack. Very impressive time there, and earning one twelve buyer. Before that, when the Lucas Class against nobody's and then you know ran his heart out in the Whitney I thought that was his best race do you think a mile and is his best uh, distance but I think he's going to face a very quick challenge from life is good who I think is just a naturally better and fitter a uh, faster horse here, um, you know, and plus he'll run clunkers like he did in Belmont or in that Saudi Cup. Um, you know, like I said, I think life is good. He's training well since the last race, and I think he's been on the up and up. And I'm going to single him uh, to end off this uh, late pick four and to end off that late pick three for that Pegasus uh, pick three. But three Camille selection for the twelve from Goldstream. It's Pegasus World Cup. Let's take the four horse. Life is good. We'll go four one six five in the Superfecta, and we'll single the four to end off the multi race wagers. So good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at horse. Horse Racing Kid 5. Good luck, everybody.